Adobe AI noise reduction. Is it a game changer? Let's find out. Now, if you're like me, noise is about as inconvenient as dropping your toast on the ground just after you've laid out all that peanut butter. It sucks, it's frustrating, and you're gonna avoid it at all cost. The only time I'm really boosting my ISO in my camera is when I'm doing astrophotography. The other night here, we had an epic Aurora Australis display, and I took my family out so we could watch the Aurora together, which was quite a special moment. Because I wanted to photograph the family and get a portrait, I didn't wanna have the exposure time too long. So for that reason, I ended up having a relatively fast shutter speed, eight seconds, and I had to boost the ISO quite high. So I ended up at 12,800 on the ISO. And that's a single exposure here and very, very dark environment. Normally doing that is, nah, you're really gonna struggle to, to pull out the details that you want, particularly because I have people in the foreground that I wanna be able to show in the frame. Um, so I, I went ahead and did that anyway. And then when I got home, I found out that Adobe had just released an update with significant noise reduction tools. That's what we're gonna have a look at now. So let's pull up the Aurora photo. So I'm here in Adobe Bridge. This is what I use to look at my files. You might be a Lightroom user. It's gonna be the same thing, I believe, once we get into the software, whether it's in Photoshop or Lightroom, because here's Adobe Camera Raw. This is where I do my processing. If you're a Lightroom user, you can see it's pretty much identical. Now look at the file before we start processing. Like, man, we've got an uphill battle here, don't we? Look how dark this bad boy is. Let's just jump on the exposure quickly and just see what we can reveal ourselves and take a look at that. that look at that nasty noise there. Man, I don't know if we're gonna salvage it or not. Let's process it, right? So I'm gonna pull up the exposure. Um, let's say about there, one stop. And ooh, we're gonna go for it. We're gonna pull the shadows up. Wow, yeah. So this is pretty much not usable at the moment, that's for sure. So shadows are up and we'll just do a tiny bit of vibrance and saturation. All right, let's move down to the detail tab. I'm assuming that's where they've probably put it. And okay, noise reduction, denoise, reduce noise with AI. Will be saved as a new DNG. So you're gonna get a new file here, I'm assuming, once we apply this. All right, so I've got this preview panel come up. It's locked in on a star. So we've got a bit of an indication here. And all right, so if we click on and off, that's showing a before and after. And now we've got this amount slider. It's showing us the amount. So obviously if we go left, it's not doing much at all. We slide to the right. We can zoom out a touch here and just analyze the whole frame. So we've got the whole image there, dial it back. Obviously that is pretty hard to see. Why don't we sit it around the default Let's go 60%, so just a little bit higher than the default. So down the bottom here, it's giving us an estimated time, 20 seconds. Let's use the magic of cinema to fast forward that 20 seconds. Oh, okay. Well, this is, uh, <laughs> this is the video here. This is, <laughs> what has it done? All right, guys, thank you for watching. I give this zero out of 10 stars. I highly recommend you don't use it. I don't know what's happened here. See you in the next video. <laughs> Has this thing done? All right, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit. Cancel, let's start it. I'm gonna pull that up again, reapply it. <laughs> it's literally created that separate DNG with that insane. This reminds me of the early Instagram days, just throw on this crazy filter. And you know, what is alarming is that I know if I posted this, some people would actually say, wow, amazing. That's the timeline we live in, right? All right, we're going in for the second attempt. I'm just gonna raise the shadows a little bit higher. I'm just wondering if the software was, the file was too dark. It <laughs> didn't know what it was doing. Let's try again, detail, noise reduction, yes please. And we'll get our preview box come up. Yeah, see, it's sampling the deck in the foreground, which is brown in the, the main shot. In the preview box, it's going blue. So it's doing this weird edit again. Uh, what's we, what options do we have? Automatically applied when using super res, yeah, okay. So there's literally nothing we can do but turn the denoise on or off and that's it. So we obviously want to do this denoise. All right, it's almost done. Are we gonna have any success this time around? Or are we gonna get back to that crazy Instagram-y filter, just bizarro edit? Dude, it's stuffed it up again. <laughs> This is the video. This is the video. Maybe it's a PC thing at the moment because this is on a PC. So we might have to get the laptop, switch out, see what happens on the laptop instead because this is just not working on the PC at all. 
If you're a PC user, let me know in the comments below if you've had any luck getting this done on the PC. There might be an upgrade that they're gonna have to send out shortly. Let's try it on the Mac. Let's see what happens on the MacBook. All right, we're back. And this next segment is brought to you by Apple MacBook Pro for 50% off. No, just kidding. It's just a joke. Okay, here we are. So we're in camera raw. You can see all our settings are just like before. Let's zoom in and look at that nasty, nasty noise. So let's jump in. Detail tab. There it is. Let's try it. Denoise. Bringing up our little preview panel. Let's leave it on the 50%. We can have a play with it, I guess. Looking good to me. I can see in the preview box that it's not giving us that deep, navy, crazy edit that the other, the PC was doing. So I've got that on 50%. I'm just moving that preview pet box there onto my wife, the subject matter in the foreground. So I'm assuming, look, as we increase that amount slider, it's going to decrease the noise as we're you know, used to seeing with the normal noise reduction. One of the, obviously, downsides, the more noise you decrease, the softer the image gets. I'm, I'm looking at that now happen as I slide that along. So it's going to be a balancing act depending on your camera and what the ISO was. I think for us, I'm going to maybe bring that about, what do you reckon, about 65? Let's try that. Ooh, estimated time, 25 seconds. We're five seconds slower in this system, but I don't think it's going to give us that crazy edit. So I think that's worth an extra five seconds. Let's see. Mmm, Apple, this is not 25 seconds. I think we're pushing 50 right now. So we've got the PC that gives us that wild edit and then now the Mac looked promising but it's potentially just and the battery is on its way out. So <laughs> my heart is starting to race now. This is quite exciting. I wonder if we'll get this done before the battery dies. It better be good. Here we go. Boom. Okay, let's have a look. <sighs> Wow, yeah, okay. Take my money, Adobe. That's a, that's a vast improvement. And you know, you guys, you saw how dark it was down there. This is almost a worst case scenario, doing the astro, complete shadow subject matter. You know, if you're doing wildlife photography or just something where you have light already in the frame, I think the results are gonna be far superior. But even what we've got here is very impressive. Can definitely get enough, you know, this is zoomed in here. If I zoom out, like that is 100% usable now compared to what we had before applying the noise reduction. So that's a major improvement that they've put into the system. Obviously with the detail slider, we can also then add a little bit of sharpening on top. If we feel like, you know, maybe it's come out a little bit too soft, we can just increase that sharpening. I'm gonna leave that about 80 or so. So I'm gonna increase the sharpening a little bit because it is going to smooth out the results there. Sorry, it's gonna smooth out the image in trying to reduce that noise. And I think that's where it's gonna be a little bit of trial and error completely depending on the individual file, but trial and error with how much you apply to the image itself. So simple to use. So now this is the new file, the DNG file. And I guess what you do from here now is just finish off your post-processing. So on this one, I'd probably still raise up some of those dark tones. I bring the highlights down for the Aurora. You can see the colors in there a lot better already now this shot is showing enough details um, to look realistic something like this you don't want the foreground extremely bright it's gonna not look real at all the reality is that it's the brightest part has to be the sky back there so like that's completely usable now and that I'm really stoked because that's that's a nice family photo a um, bit of a family portrait of a memorable night watching the Aurora together for the first time AI denoise very impressive now I don't know what happened with the PC Seems to have gone all right here on the MacBook. Took a while to get there, but um, the results are definitely worth it. Look, there's obviously plugins you can get. I think it is it Topaz. Um, the, the plugins and other software that has done the noise reduction that's been around for a couple of years now, I've never gone out of my way to, to purchase just because I'm not doing astrophotography that much. I just have, haven't had the need for it. So now having this in here, and I always had a feeling Adobe was gonna do it. Um, that'd be crazy not to, but this, it's just really got me thinking about 
yeah, astrophotography in general, but just low light scenarios. And because I really don't use a tripod except for doing the astro, yeah, it's just got me thinking of a few cool ideas we might be able to try moving forward in the future and just really pushing the technology as far as we can. All right, is it a game changer? I tell you what, I'm definitely impressed. Impressed to the point that I'm starting to think about shooting astro handheld now. I'm trying to think of a way that we're gonna be able to pull this off because as you know, I don't like the tripod and software like this combined with the current camera technology that we have, I think it's really opening up new possibilities. So stay tuned for that one. Thanks for checking this video out. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll get back to you. Cheers.